At some point in the future, or maybe already, you may find yourself needing an LTE or 4G router. Now that could be your ISP speeds are not quick enough, or even the fact that you're not able to get an internet connection quick enough. So what we're going to have a look at today is TP-Link's 4G LTE router. Now we're going to have a quick look at unboxing it and see what comes inside the box, along with going through and getting it set up. Now this model is the TLMR6400 and it gives you a speed of up to 300 megabits per second. Now there are some other ones available also as well which can go up to 1200 megabits per second but for the scenario that I'm going to be using this for this should be sufficient enough. If you're new here don't forget to hit the subscribe button as I do post more videos every week and if you're a returning subscriber thank you very much for your support it's always appreciated. If you do find this video useful, leave some comments down below. The link to this product is also going to be in the description, so if you do want to have a look at it, feel free to check it out. Let's start with the unboxing. So we have the TP-Link box here. Um, as I mentioned right at the start, 300 megabits per second is the Wi-Fi speed. Again, faster speeds are available if you wish to do so. 4G SIM card and um, the Qualcomm inside for better reliability. Um, but we'll have a look at that shortly. Um, just some more information on the side here, how to set it up. SIM card, you can connect up to 32 devices. Uh, management made simple, again we'll dive into the web interface very shortly and you have a WAN backup connection as well. Let's go ahead and have a look at what's inside. So let's open the box. Okay, nothing interesting here, just some compliance stuff in terms of the frequencies. Um, you have a couple of antennas, which are just here, okay, and you have some plugs, or you have a plug, should I say, just to plug it in. Nice uh, shiny top, so let's have a look at the connections on the back. So you have your antenna slots just here, uh, you have your power, you have LAN 1, 2 and 3, and 4 can be used as a LAN backup or WAN, so this can be used with a cable modem. Um, WPS slot, Wi-Fi on and off, and it takes a micro SIM card. So that can be popped straight in there. So we'll install that shortly. Just some information on the back. It can be wall mounted. If you want it to be wall mounted, you can do that. So that is that. Let's have a look at what else comes in here. So you have a network cable to get plugged in. Quick installation guide. So this shows you what you need to do. Uh, so connecting up all the hardware, verify it and enjoy the internet. So it looks like this should be fairly simple as plug and play. Now obviously you want to do some configuration, change some settings, so everything is all not the default. So we'll have a look at doing that and it says down here how you, how you can access it. So we'll have a look at that shortly. If you have a micro SIM card, um, you can actually put it in here to turn it into a uh, sorry, a nano SIM card, you can turn it into a micro SIM card so it can fit inside this slot here and you can use a piece of tape to make sure it doesn't move or get stuck in there. And I think that's about it. So I'm going to move this to one side, just going to take this packaging off. And then I have a SIM card here already so I'm just going to take this off. So just to show you how this works, you pop your SIM card on here. Um, that can go in and then it is just a case of putting the sticker on. So just going to quickly do that down here. Seems really far away. And there we go, that's installed. So I actually found it's easier to put the tape on first and then put the SIM card in. So let's go ahead and pop the SIM card in. So there we go. And you can hear that. I don't know if you can actually hear this, but it clicks in and out. There you go. So then that's that, you know that's in. So let's go ahead and fit the antennas. So there we go, that's one. There we go. So there we go, that's now ready. So we just need to take our power, plug this in. Power goes in here. And then we can go off and plug this in. So now that that's done, I'm going to go off and plug this in and we're going to get this set up. So let's go over to the computer. So let's start by joining the uh, TP-Link network. So let's go to network preferences. Let's see what uh, Wi-Fi's are available uh, or SSIDs. And that's the TP-Link we want to join. So I have the default password here. So I'm going to put that in. Okay, and then we click join. 
There we go, we're connected. 192.168.1.100 is our IP. First thing I'm gonna quickly do just to validate that we have a internet connection. Um, I'm just gonna ping 8.8.8.8 and we, have a, we get a response. So I know the SIM card I installed, there is an internet connection. So here we go, so we're logging in. This is the um, first time we are logging in. So it's asking you to set a password. So I'm just gonna go with uh, something basic for now um, and let's get started okay so the first time you log in it's going to tell you to pick your time zone so time zones correct for London we click next uh, it's telling you what your password so it's already pulled the details that it needs for the sim card as I checked already we already do have an internet connection so it is working already okay so we then click next and this is where you now set up your wireless settings. So we can keep the SSID, we can change this. So then we click next. So what you need to quickly go off and do now is reconnect to the uh, router again. So let's go to network preferences. Uh, it's joined me back to my other network. So I wanna join what we just named it and we'll wait for it to pick up a new IP address, which it should fairly quickly. Yep, there we go, 192.168.1.100. So there we go. Um, and I have successfully reconnected using the new wireless settings. So it doesn't actually let me click, but if I refresh the page. Okay, so now it's gonna go out to the internet and test this. There we go, successful. And there we go, it just gives you a quick summary of everything that is there. Click next. If you haven't already at this point, you can register for a TP-Link ID. Um, and if you have, then you can just pop in your email address and password. So whichever one you need to do. There we go, so you can see we're connected. We have this, so the message, there's a message here showing you that we're connected, what your IP address and your DNS server is. So one thing I quickly wanna do now is just go to speed test, have a quick look at what speed we're getting. Okay, not too bad, 15 megabits per second. This is obviously better than what some people get um, in rural areas with their normal ADSL speeds, so this is probably good for some people. In terms of my connection that I have at home is really good, so this is not that great. But it is inside the house, it's somewhere in the middle of the house. If we put it next to a window somewhere, um, it probably can get a little bit better in terms of a network connection speed. So let's just run through the interface. So this actually looks fairly simple and easy to use. So a quick network map of what there is here, what your transfer speed is, how much you've used, so you can keep an eye. If you've got a certain amount of data, you can keep an eye on your data here. Uh, the internet, it's here, you can show what you prefer, 4G only, 3G only, but 4G is preferred, depending on uh, where you are and what your network status is you can get. Your wireless settings are here. You can create a guest network to allow guests to uh, log on to here. Okay, so that's quite good. So for a fairly basic router, it seems fairly simple. You would enable the guest network and set a password and then they would be allowed to log on. So in here you can actually set some rules, so allow guests to access each other and allow guests to access my local network. So for example, if I had something else on the network, you could get them to contact it, such as a printer, scanner, whatever it might be, they would be able to contact them. Uh, parental controls, so on here you can enable parental controls and you can limit, limit stuff. Uh, you can add bits and pieces here, device name, MAC, addre MAC address, and what the effective time, so when you wanna ban them and when you wanna allow them on the network. So that's quite cool there for well, you parents with kids out there on the network. And the TP-Link cloud. Um, I haven't signed into this just yet, but if you wanna sign in, you can sign in just here. And we'll have a quick look at advanced. So here there's gonna be a fair amount. So we have, again, similar sort of thing to status, but it then shows you your LAN, guest network, etc., etc. Uh, operation mode so it shows you which mode you want to use it in do you want to use it in your 3g 4g mode or do you want to use it as a wireless router so it's showing you your internet status um, if you want to upgrade the ISP file which we don't need to just yet any pin management data settings so you can have a look at setting some data limits and it will send you a text message um, as to when your data might be running out so something quite useful LAN settings, so if you wanted to change your network settings, for example, you want to change the subnet, you want to add something else in there, you can do that from here. Uh, dynamic DNS, so actually TP-Link has a dynamic DNS service built within it, so if you have a fluctuating IP, which is something that this will, 
Um, the dynamic DNS settings will allow you to just redirect. Uh, static routing, IP6 tunneling, which we won't go into too much. Um, SMS, you do have a phone number attached to the SIM card, so you can send messages from here if you wish to do so. New text message, outbox, uh, SMS settings. Then you have your wireless network, so you have your wireless settings in here that you can have set up. Uh, WPS, wireless schedule, so you can turn them on and off. Uh, you can turn the wireless off at specific points if you want, and you can turn them on at specific points. Uh, the statistics, so you can have a look at here what the connection type is, how many packets they've sent and received. So you have some additional stuff on the guest network, and you actually have some, it actually says you can enable QoS for your guest network which is good for, a, for the, this type of router that TP-Link can include this with the software. So overall, there's, I'm actually quite impressed so far with the amount of stuff you can actually do with this. There's quite a lot in here. Even if you want to replace your existing router, there is quite a, quite a lot you can do in here. So if you want to do any forwarding, if you want to do port triggers, DMZ, if you've got a DMZ network or UPnP, uh, universal plug and play, you can set this up here. Uh, again, not going to go too much into this one. Probably a bit more in terms of parental controls. Doesn't really seem to be too much here other than what was in the other one. Uh, QoS, so this is where you can set up your QoS. Security, so there's some firewall settings in here. You can turn on the firewall, um, which is quite cool. Uh, service filtering. Access control, IP and MAC binding. Uh, again, I'm not going to go too much into this. It's quite technical. Um, and IPv IPv6 firewall, which is also enabled. Uh, one thing that caught my eye when I went to this is there seems to be some sort of VPN settings here, which is useful for a lot of people. So OpenVPN, you can enable it from here. You need to generate a certificate and export the config if you require. There's also PPTP VPN. Um, and then just some settings so you can see who's connected via OpenVPN or who's connected via PPTP. Um, if you want to see how to set these up in a little bit more detail, let me know, drop me a comment in the section below and I'll be happy to go through them. The final bit we have here is the system tools um, and there's a lot more in here. So time settings, uh, LED control, so this is just probably just for the current um, on the front of the interface, you can turn the LEDs on and off and there's also a night mode which is quite nice, so if you have this in your room or somewhere where you don't want it to distract you in the dark, you can turn off the LED mode at night. Uh, diagnostics, so if you have an internet issue you can run some diagnostics on here, firmware update, and it shows here your firmware is already up to date which is great. Uh, backup and restore. I can't emphasize this enough. Backup, backup, backup. Take a backup of your files. So I've just taken a quick config backup. Um, and if you ever did a factory reset and you wanted to restore this, you can just restore the file from here. Uh, if you want to reboot it, or if you want to set up scheduled reboots, so if you want to give it a reboot, say once a month, once in a while, once a week, you can do that from here. Uh, the administrators, so the passwords are here if you want to do that for local management, if you want to change the ports, remote management, if you wish to do that also as well. So overall, again, as I said earlier, I'm fairly imp impressed by this. Um, it seems fairly easy to set up and it gets you out a bit of a bind if you need an internet connection fairly quickly. Or again, as I said, if you're in a rural area where your internet connection is not that great and your LTE service or 4G service is a little bit better, you can use this router. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, let me know in the comments below. Again, if you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you have enjoyed this, well, hit the like button for me as well. The links to the products used in this video are in the description below. They are linked to my Amazon affiliate account and it does help me if you buy anything using those links. So feel free to have a look. If you wanna see more videos like this, let me know. For now, this is Inside Wire and I'll see you in the next one.